Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Max from Team Nimic. Welcome to our Nimic 2.0 tech update. I'm very happy to welcome my dear colleagues from the Nimic core developer team, Bruno, Philip and Pascal today. And we are going to talk about the past, the present and the future of the Nimic 2.0 developments. Guys, um, if I remember correctly, the last tech update was released um, in April, so almost four months past now. What happened in the meantime? What have you been working on and how are the developments for Nimic 2.0 going? Lots of things have happened. Uh, maybe Bruno wants to say something about the NanoSync improvements. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, Tell what has happened, know. actually, in that regard? Uh, initially, we wanted to use recursive snarks which is, okay, it's a very technical term, but uh, basically it was the ideal solution for us. Um, then we thought that we actually couldn't do it. And so the last tech update, we discussed it, how we were doing it at the time, and actually almost completed it, uh, without using recursive snacks. The problem is that we weren't really happy with mm -hmm. the result, so we went back and uh, we actually ended up re-implementing it all with the recursive snacks, which give us uh, very good properties for that. Now you can probe an entire blockchain in constant size, can also probe it whenever there's a new block in constant size. So doesn't matter how long Nimic 2.0 lasts, it will always remain the same size. Um, and it was actually quite a big challenge. Okay, so in, in like one phrase, what is the main advantage of using these recursive snacks? Well, scalability, I think. Scalability, yes. Okay, cool. With other That's solution, what we need, so perfect. Yes. With other solution, the proofs should grow a bit bigger every year. Not a lot, but you know, after 10, 20 years, maybe it would be too much to actually run in the browser. Now that doesn't happen at all, and the proofs are even a bit smaller than initially. Thoughts. So there was a lot of improvements on there. Um, yeah, so I think like when you released the Albatross technical paper, this was like a theoretical um, a theoretical development and now yes. you really you're working on and I imagine like that you learn a lot more about how stuff actually works. So. Is this the only change that you that you made or the only development or did you change um, other stuff too to improve it? Um, actually, NanoSync at the time was just a footnote, I think, in the <laughs> paper with the zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. um, there were more improvements, yes. A very recent one was actually the change from PVFT to Tendermint. Also a very technical change, but uh, want to take that? Yeah, maybe? could you elaborate sure. a bit on that? Yeah, yeah. What is that, that about? So, um, originally we used uh, PVFT in our protocol for the finality. Uh, basically, it's a protocol where all of the nodes, uh, they agree on a blog and this one is fine. Everyone says, basically, or the majority says, this is the blog and um, so you can trust that. Mm -hmm. And PBFT is one of the classical protocols to do that. That was the main reason we wanted to use this one in, in our protocol as well, because it is well established. It, it has been um, proposed like in the 90s and so we went with that one. And now after actually implementing this one, and working with this, we found that there might be better solutions. So we stumbled upon the Tendermint protocol, which is a variant, a variation of this PBFT protocol. And it, it, it basically gives you additional properties that are nice for our use case. For example, uh, Tendermint is already verified formally, which means we have a mathematical guarantee that this protocol behaves as we expect it to be. Mm -hmm. It has all of the properties we need. And also Tendermint uh, has another advantage. It has uh, less reliance on timers. This is quite technical, but what that actually means is that uh, we have less issues if, uh, if the clocks, if the time on different nodes is a bit out of sync. Okay. Yeah. And so this makes it more robust. And another thing that makes it more robust is that it has very clear transitions between the states in this protocol and that makes it first of all easier to implement and also more robust in the end. So I understand that there is still, you're not just building what you envisioned in the paper, but you're actually constantly doing 
research along the way to see if there are any technical improvements in the meanwhile that you could still like build into the NIMIC 2.0 protocol. Absolutely. So that is mm -hmm. basically uh, um, like the approach here is not to just build the thing that you envisioned, but if there's a possibility to make it even better, you'd say it's worth to invest um, uh, like yes. the effort in, mm -hmm. in taking new developments and adding them to improve the NIMIC 2.0 blockchain. Definitely. So that yes. it will like in yes. the yes. end really be a cutting edge yes. development even from a research perspective. No, whenever you Absolutely. are implementing something, you end up learning a lot more than you know at the beginning. You know, So what we knew when the paper was written is a lot less than what we know now. So there are different design decisions. Mm -hmm. So with the knowledge you have today and all the work that has been done um how confident are you about um the let's say unknown unknowns that you're still expecting because like when developing cutting edge technology there's always you might come across stuff that doesn't work as planned or that you don't know before but do you think do you have a good understanding of the whole process of the of the development now are you like is everything going as expected the unknown unknowns are not something that you can really plan for, right? So, uh, I mean, we are we are moving ahead. We are discovering new things along the way. We are we, we are gathering a new domain knowledge as we move along with the process of developing NIMIC 2.0. But of course, you can only basically uh, see until the next turn in the road. Mm -hmm. As you all, all already mentioned, I mean, building 2.0 is, is also kind of a moving target, right? We had like a an initial plan with the paper that True. we wrote and we were working towards implementing what we wrote in the paper. But along the way, we discover new things. Some things don't work as we expect them. We find better solution for some for some aspects that we you know, planned uh, differently initially in the paper. So uh, that also leads to maybe, you know, some stuff being pushed ahead uh, or pushed um, uh, further uh, back uh, in time a little bit because, you know, stuff changes along the way. Yeah. So I envision the process of, of actually moving towards NIMIC 2.0. It's not like in the end that you will like uh, press a button and, and suddenly there's the transition. So this is basically a complex process. What are the next milestones and steps that you're working on and, and what, how, what is the road towards NIMIC 2.0? What's next on your map? So I'd say the next bigger goal, larger goal, is that we want to have a testnet running where we only have full nodes, so only nodes that run on, on the server. Mm -hmm. uh, they are connected to each other, they can sync the chain, they can build new blocks, and having this and trying to make this as, as robust as possible, that's the major next uh, step on, on, the, on the roadmap, basically. Uh, and on the way to this, there are still some improvements that we have in the pipeline right now and that we are working on right now. Uh, one of them, for example, is the are the uh, checkpoint blocks something uh, which were not part, for example, of the original Albatross paper no, that we no, wrote? It wasn't. It was yeah. another improvement that was made. Cool. Um, exactly. And sounds important, definitely. Checkpoint it, blocks. It basically improves the finality properties even more because it gives you quicker finality. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, we only had these election blocks, these epoch blocks. So these can be actually quite quite long of a distance, like uh, up to six hours or so. And um, you give, you get very good finality uh, guarantees in between, but not um, not real finality as as the PBFT mm -hmm. protocol or Tendermint can give It's like you. a preview yeah, kind of. Yeah. And so what we did is uh, we also put into an epoch other blocks that also gives you full finality guarantee. Oh, great. And it also, so first of all, it's a major improvement for the finality, yes. how quick you get finality, but also it helps you when syncing, uh, because for example, the CK snark sync that we've been talking about uh, already, mm -hmm. this only brings you to the last epoch. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then there could be six hours of blocks ahead of you that you have to yes. learn about. Of and, these, blocks, which, yeah. Yeah. and these checkpoint blocks the basically percent. help you skip a lot of that. Okay. So you can get up to the latest five minutes or so using the checkpoint blocks. Yeah. It was the main motivation actually behind the uh, finality is a nice side effect too. So, so um, in the end, when you when you have the final protocol and it's running in that testnet with mm -hmm. only full nodes, 
and then at some point you will approve that this is the final state and then from a security perspective will there be a bug bounty program how will you actually really test drive this test net to make sure that it meets the quality requirements and all the technical requirements that yeah we we usually take um, very seriously how do you make that happen so i think after having a, a stable full node test net a set of validators and full nodes uh, the second step is going to be, um, or maybe a parallel step, a second step is going to take care of all the nano nodes and the browser clients, mm -hmm. uh, which is of, of course a very important component uh, in Phonemic, uh, having first class browser client or SPV mm -hmm. client support. Uh, and then in parallel to that we will uh, start uh, the bug bounty program for the, uh, for the NIMIC 2.0 uh, code base. So we will encourage external hackers and security experts to review our code and to start testing our code and okay. identify uh, vulnerabilities and weaknesses in our code base. Uh, and then uh, we will also run a, a number of stress tests, also public stress tests on the on the test net to see that it actually holds up and it gives us the performance that we that we want. Um, and then we will basically, when, once we are confident that this, the, the code that we have written and the code base is, is, is uh, okay or is good enough to be uh, released, then we will basically start the whole hard fork process, which is, okay. which which is, is also another topic. Exactly. So, I mean, ultimately to switch to that chain, a lot of things have to happen and a lot of, it, it, especially it involves a lot of coordination with the community, with miners, with pools, with exchanges who all need to update to the new uh, software version. We'll have to run a bunch of hard fork tests. We'll probably bunch, uh, hard fork the test net a bunch of times to really make sure that this hard fork, hard fork goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. So this will take a, probably a couple, an, uh, another couple of months to really get the whole hard fork thing yeah. set up, get everybody ready uh, so that we can at some point really flick the switch and smoothly transition from NIMIC 1.0 to 2.0. Okay, sounds great and understandable. We also, yes. by the way, need uh, some period where the uh, community can actually register as validators for the new right. chain. Oh, that's mm -hmm. also important. Yeah, community yeah. members can apply to become yes. the first validators. Exactly. Like Genesis validators. Yeah. Okay. To wow. be part of the R4 process, mm -hmm. the change mm -hmm. to 2.0. Um, but yeah, people will be able to signal on the 1.0 chain that they want to become validators mm -hmm. on the new chain. Um, so they can kind of pre-stake already a bit. Um, and then when the new chain starts, they will be the actual first validators for the first cycle. Mm -hmm. Of course, anyone who doesn't want to go through all that trouble, they can just stake on the new chain and they can become validators right from the second epoch mm -hmm. onwards. Yeah. Yeah, so, but this is like for the very first epoch when yes, it all starts. It's, it's a okay, that's so very exciting. Some history, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. for people. Oh, I'm sure some of our community developers are up for yeah, that. Yeah, we'll jump Really cool. Yeah. Great. So guys, um, uh, thank you very much for this overview. Uh, that was really interesting. And I understand that there is really a lot of original research involved in building NIMIC 2.0. So if I understand correctly, you are not taking bits and pieces that already exist, but there is actually really like groundwork, research groundwork involved. How new and innovative is NIMIC 2.0 in, in the end? Like how, how much are you also contributing to the blockchain space with these developments? There's a lot of new research going on and uh, some of it actually contributes uh, a lot to the community, not just the blockchain community, but also the larger cryptography community. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in the recursive snarks, when we decided that we wanted to do it, there was not uh, a good enough library, so to speak, for the curves that we, that we needed. So it didn't exist. We actually needed to take one that we liked and add the recursive snarks on there because uh, it was not possible at the time. Actually, it was Pascal's work. Uh, maybe yeah, you can sure. expand on it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the main uh, issue was, so we, we found a good library for Rust yes. uh, that works with CK snarks, but mm -hmm. not recursive snarks. Okay. And there were some there was some research already. Um, other projects tried using recursive snarks. There were some implementations. But these implementations were not suitable for us, they were not in Rust. No. Uh, and so we had to contribute to the cryptography community, as, um, as you put it, yes. 
And so we went and implemented these recursive snarks on an existing library, contributed to their library, and now everybody who wants to use recursive snarks in Rust can actually use this library. And they wow, took yes. it further and they are working to improve that even further now. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really cool. So um, I'm sure that our community is also interested about a rough timeline. I think we all understand now that this is original work and original research and that unplanned things can happen. Um, we learn that you are confident about what you're doing, but what would be your ideal path into the next um, steps or what would, you, would your view down the road be? I think we've mentioned the major milestones that we see for the NIMIC uh, 2.0 release. Um, Timeline-wise, um, I think we should manage to have the implementation of NIMIC 2.0 ready by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we should be able to start the review hardening phase and also start to get the community uh, ready to prepare the hard fork. So I would expect that we can do the actual switch to NIMIC uh, 2.0 sometime in Q1, probably. Okay. Yeah. All right towards the end of Q1. Do you guys want to add anything more to that? No, just that all timelines are, of course, you know, estimates. Yeah. As I said, it is new research and sometimes I have surprises. Of course, we are clo very close to the end now, so few surprises appear. Uh, but still, no, it's just an estimate. Uh, we do our best, but you know, it's not an art timeline. Yeah. and say like, oh, like 1st of April. The unknown yeah. unknowns are exactly. not really in the so timeline. At okay, a given right. point, there will be a specific date for the hard fork, but that's when there are no more surprises, no more unknowns to do. So until then, um, it's all estimates. So I under if I understood correctly, you split up um, uh, the different items that are needed in order to complete NIMIC 2.0 and updated the roadmap with them. So for everybody who wants to learn more, feel free to visit nimic.com slash roadmap. And of course, if you want to stay um, updated with all the latest developments, make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Telegram and on YouTube and on all our social channels basically because we will keep you updated on a daily basis. I hope you enjoyed our little tech update in the interview with my friends from CORE. And yeah, stay tuned and um, see you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.